In today's lesson, I'll be looking at using ethanol as a fuel. I'll be discussing why we would want to use ethanol and how we produce ethanol for this very reason. So ethanol is actually a renewable resource, which as you can see from the picture, it's all green. The arrows mean that it can be recycled and reused, which is very good for our environment and very good for humans in general and animals and anything that lives on planet Earth, basically. So that's a good thing. Now let's look at depleting fossil fuels. As I've discussed previously, the majority of our energy use needs energy needs comes from fossil fuels, so oil, gas and petroleum. Unfortunately they're finite, so they will run out. And fossil fuels are being used at an accelerating rate, especially in new up and coming third world countries such as China and India. They're being used more and more and more and we will run out. Uh, we can't reproduce them, so they take hundreds of thousands of years to produce. So we need other ways of fueling our modern day life. And fossil fuels, non-renewable, unlike ethanol. So this is the years of production of fossil fuels that we have left in the ground with the current reserves and flows. Coal, we have 148 years left. Sounds okay, but it's finite. There's a number on it. Oil, uh-oh, 43 years, not very long. We use so much oil, we need it for cars, we need it for ships, uh, trains, all sorts of things. So this is why we need to think about alternative energy sources. And natural gas, only 61 years. So that's why fossil fuels, not the best way to go. So we need alternative energy sources. Let's look at the properties of ethanol, okay? It's a colourless, volatile liquid. As you can see there in the uh, conical flask, you have the structural formula, CH3, CH2, OH. And remembering that ethanol is an alcohol, so the functional group is a hydroxyl group, OH. Okay. Its boiling point is 78.5 degrees Celsius. And this is lower than water. Water is 100 degrees Celsius. And this is because water has more extensive hydrogen bonding than ethanol. Therefore, it has a higher boiling point and a higher melting point. Now, let's look at the production of ethanol. How do we get this ethanol so that we can use it for fuel? Now, it's been proposed as an alternative liquid fuel for automobiles or cars. And it can be produced from starch or sugars present in sugarcane, corn, wheat and other grains by fermentation. And there are many other grains such as barley and other crops that we can get ethanol from. Cellulose as a source of ethanol, fantastic. Remembering that cellulose is the most abundant organic molecule in the world and it makes up the cell walls of plants. But unfortunately, currently there's no economically viable method for obtaining ethanol from cellulose. It's just too expensive at this point. We can get, oh yes, we can get ethanol from cellulose, but it's just too expensive, unfortunately. Uh, it's actually cheaper to use fossil fuels. So we'll see how the, how the future pans out, really. Um, so the extraction procedure requires large amounts of energy input to get the ethanol that we need. So, again on cellulose, okay, the extraction requires a lot of energy, this translates to large costs, okay. The more cost, the less likely we are to extract the ethanol this way. So let's look at fermentation, another way of getting cellulose. Industrial scale fermentation of starch and sugars to ethanol has been carried out for decades. Now, ethanol production in Brazil. Here's a case example where in Brazil, because they can't, they don't actually have their own fossil fuel, they, they don't actually have oil that they can mine in Brazil, they thought, well, let's adopt ethanol as a major use for fuel for cars in the 1970s and 80s. And as you can see in the picture, grown for biofuel, this is actually in Brazil. 
So it was their major fuel because they couldn't, they didn't have petrol or oil. And they used sugar cane grown specifically to get ethanol for their cars. And this was also to reduce the consumption of non-renewable crude oil, which was expensive and they had to import from other countries. And it also addressed the environmental and trade concerns. So because fossil fuels are bad for the environment, and because there were embargoes between countries, Brazil and America, for example, they decided, let's use ethanol. Let's, let's try that. It was very costly and it was actually abandoned in the 90s. But it's a great case study. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out because it was just too expensive in the end. Now, the United States actually produces a limited amount of petrol ethanol mixtures and they call it gasohol, which is quite amusing. And if, if you might know, they call petrol gas uh, because it's from gasoline. So they called it gasohol because it had an alcohol group. So gasohol, quite amusing. So let's look at ethanol as a fuel for automobiles or cars. Now you may have seen these petrol pumps with different percentages of ethanol in the petrol, okay? Now engines in motor vehicles can run on petrol ethanol mixtures as long as they contain less than 15% ethanol. Otherwise the car will actually need modifications. Now because ethanol is quite a reactive substance, it will actually hurt parts of the engine, such as the carburetor, the fuel line, the fuel pump, those sort of things. So anything more than about 15%, you would have to modify your car. But below that, it's fine. So anything higher than that, yes, you would need to get your car modified. But if you got your car modified, you could actually run the whole car on 100% ethanol. So it is, it is a usable fuel, apart from fossil fuels. Unfortunately, cars will need modification. So, ethanol is corrosive. It can degrade some materials in the engine and the fuel system if at high enough concentrations. And because it has a higher oxygen content than alkanes in petrol, for example, octane, okay, because it has the hydroxyl group, that's why it's more corrosive and more reactive. Ethanol generally undergoes complete combustion in a car okay, and emits less carbon dioxide, CO2, and less carbon monoxide, CO, which is fantastic for the environment because both these things are greenhouse gases and also poisonous to humans and animals. So let's look at the equation for complete combustion of ethanol. What we have here is ethanol, C2H5OH, as a liquid. If you burn it in oxygen, three molecules of oxygen, gas. What you produce is carbon dioxide gas and water, liquid. So that's the clean, efficient burning and the full combustion of ethanol. And what we have here is the enthalpy, or the energy given out, is minus 1,367 kilojoules per mole. Now remember, the negative here indicates that it's an exothermic process, okay? So this is giving out heat also. Okay, so molar heat of combustion, 1367 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Now, ethanol as an alter alternative fuel source has many positives, but it also has some negatives with regard to the way cars are currently manufactured and our dependency on fossil fuels. So we can use ethanol, we know how to, it's possible, but at this current time, it's probably cheaper to keep burning fossil fuels. So that's why it may take some time until we actually do start using ethanol as an everyday fuel. So now onto some questions. Question one, which of the following statements about the current use of ethanol as a fuel is most accurate? Okay, as I said before, up to 15% ethanol can be added to petrol without harming cars. Okay, 15% is your magic number to think about. So above that, modifications are going to be needed to your car, otherwise it will ruin the parts of your car and your engine. 
Uh, ethanol production is currently more cost costly than petrol, unfortunately. So our answer to this question is going to be, in some countries, ethanol is being used as an additive, such as here in Australia, also the United States. Um, so that's our answer for that one. Question two, why is ethanol referred to as a renewable resource? Okay, let's look at the equation for the complete combustion of ethanol. Ethanol and oxygen going to carbon dioxide and water. So our answer to that one is ethanol can be made from plant material which can be regrown and harvested. That's why it's renewable. You can keep making ethanol. But with our fossil fuels, they take hundreds of thousands of years to produce over uh, the decay of biomass and biological systems, so that cannot be renewed. That's why ethanol is actually renewable. Question three, explain why ethanol is sought after as an alternative source of fuel. The reserves of petroleum are finite, which means they will run out, and they are non-renewable. Petroleum is used at an accelerating rate, especially in modern, new, fast-moving countries, and it's facing depletion. So, a permanent source of fuel is needed to sustain our way of life, okay? And ethanol is seen as a suitable renewable resource of energy. Question four, what benefits are available in using ethanol as an additive in fuels for automobiles or cars, or boats for that matter, or trains? Okay, so ethanol can be used as a petrol extender and therefore reduce the consumption of petrol. So if you think you have that much petrol, if you're using, for example, 15%, ETOH, ethanol, therefore that 15% is less petrol that you're using. So you're not using as much petrochemicals. Okay, so it's, it's an extender, but it doesn't harm your car to that point. So ethanol generally undergoes complete combustion, generally, uh, leading to cleaner exhaust gases, okay, less carbon monoxide, okay, and carbon particulate pollution. Okay, so solid carbon, C solid, coming out of your exhaust, not very nice. That's the black stuff that gets on the road. That's the stuff that gets into your breathing, not very nice at all. So that's one of the benefits of ethanol. So finally on to question five. Write the chemical equation, including the enthalpy change for the complete combustion of ethanol. Okay, so we start with ethanol, structural formula, C2H5OH, liquid, complete combustion, which means it's burning in oxygen, so we add oxygen, O2 gas, and it goes to carbon dioxide and water. So that's the complete combustion equation for ethanol, and the enthalpy change, delta H, is minus 1367 kilojoules per mole. So that completes my discussion about using ethanol as a fuel.